Alpha Omega London, maker of shoes, creators of waves in the fashion industry, introduces Fashion Vanguard's podcast. We aim to open minds, share knowledge, listen to opinions, and start conversations. Our podcast series unravels fashion's many guises and tackles head-on the current issues that matter, getting honest views from the mouths that matter. In this series, we'll be exploring how blockchain can impact the world of fashion by aiding transparency and supply chain, amongst other things. We've discussed what blockchain does and how it can be applied in various industries, including fashion. The technology's benefits make a compelling case for how it can be used to make the supply chain more transparent. It does, however, have its disadvantages. In an effort to better understand and make others aware of tech innovations in fashion, we have some panelists with us today. They are Nazina, Gurdeep, Daniel, Raid, and myself, Ashwini. So how is blockchain currently being applied in the fashion industry? I know we spoke about this briefly in the previous episode, but really, um, how is it being applied currently and what are its drawbacks? Yeah, uh, Daniel, I think you're the best person to ask (laughs) this, only because you've just written a fantastic, glowing article on it. Um, (laughs) So from my research, um, there are actually companies that are uh, coming up now that are calling themselves um fashion or sustainability blockchain companies which i find really interesting because it's so niche um but it's also something that's so needed in an industry that we've already talked mm. about that needs it um so martin jalgard i think that's um and uh providence providence, providence yeah, yeah. yeah um they and came yeah, yeah and uh, so they've come they've all come together to um they did it last year in copenhagen fashion summit and um they basically tried to create a blockchain supply block, blockchain supply chain. Mm, I know that's mm. kind of, but a blockchain supply chain in the sense that they had this tag. It was almost like a QR code, mm. um, and then you could scan it and you could see exactly where the fashion um, the product had been made, um, who it had been made by, where it had been made by. Um, was and it, it something done with the phone at all? Just yes, out of curiosity, yes. so you could actually so it's walking into a shop essentially. Yes. And using your phone, scanning it, and I believe got so. all the data. I believe so. There's not a lot of coverage on how exactly it was done. It was yeah. just kind of done. Mm-hmm. But I believe that, like, especially at a summit, a conference, um, I don't know how many conferences people have been to around the room, but <laughs> at conferences, people are on their laptops, but Wi-Fi can also be somewhat of an issue. So mm-hmm. being on, you know, your phone, being able to snap it. So I think it because it was a tag, and especially if it was a tag, I think a phone would go really well with that. I, I don't think... You know, people are scanning it with their webcam on their Mac or whatever. You know, I think it was, I think it was their phone because uh, it was a very like interactive thing. So mm. my assumption would be phone, but um, don't quote me on that. I mean, fashion more widely um, has been starting to adopt some sort of blockchain technology in um, in that uh, companies, big brand companies, established companies are looking to establish some sort of blockchain just so that they can get their foot in the door, if that makes sense, Um, and influence other companies to do the same. So um, two examples for the way it's used, it would be, uh, one would be as uh, grievance calls. Right. So if there are human rights issues, uh, biggest one that everyone kind of knows about is Foxconn 2010, 2011 uh, with Apple in China. Um, and all the like people were working 12, 14 hours a day with no break. Uh, they'd be put in these almost prison like cells, um, you know, and given two hours of passports removed from them, all these sorts of things. Uh, another example of that is electronics in Thailand. Um, I think that was a big brand. I, I don't want to say the name because I, I don't, I, I'm not completely sure on it, but um, it's, you know, that, that all came out. So there was then an emphasis, an, an emphasis to look at grievance calls. Um, and so for example, blockchain could be used if someone makes a call to, um, the company HQ or the contractor HQ that can be recorded, logged, 
and then almost like he, uh, Rahid was talking about, put it in, in a ledger, you know, that it would make m- make it mm. make mm. it decentralized. So that's one example. And, and that's oh. com- confidential. And that's yeah, that's confidential. Mm. Uh, it can only be act- it's encrypted. One only what person who puts it in and the person who needs to receive it can get it. Right. The second thing is the more I suppose popularized version, which is tracking supply chain, right. like you know, like what Martin Jalgar did, doing that for companies and brands Mm. now the problem with that is that when you get into looking at blockchain and you get into looking about how it can be used in fashion it's not like you know Gurdjieff was talking about it's not it it's not easily recognizable how the link can be made between Mm. blockchain and fashion so looking at it a supply chain makes that link but it's kind of like who who's going to do it first so yes Martin Jalkov did it first but who's now going to do it next and mm. who's going to do it after that and what yeah. brands are going to come and so I have my examples for blockchain aren't the fashion industry mm. my block the grievance calls is uh, um, a utilities company called Schneider Electric based in France and the um, supply chain is Centrica which owns British Gas right. so th- these are you know big Utility, energy companies right. yeah, yeah. that you can imagine with all the environmental concerns blockchain could be a really good resource for that so my knowledge on fashion per, per se for mm. blockchain is as far as to say about Martin Jalgaard, mm. as well as like the blockchain sustainability fashion companies that are coming up. But how it can be applied um, is those energy utility examples. But, but what you have very clearly sort of demonstrated is, is that it can be used to improve sustainability. Yes. Um, and, and that sort of follows on to the question that we were going to ask or pose. It, it's just, you know, could blockchains obviously substantially improve sustainability particularly within the fashion world um and you know apart from those two uh, you know sort of um you know areas that you mentioned um does anyone or could anyone have a brainstorm in fact if there's nothing that has been proved as yet could anyone have sort of like a brainstorm in terms of what it could also substantially improve with 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 sustainability is is like it's it's end goal i guess i think sustainability is one of those things it's a buzzword right Mm. everyone wants to talk about it but no one knows how to use it right in the sense that like i can talk about sit here and talk about sustainability but i'm my version of sustainability will be one version out of five different versions right or four different versions that we have around the table so I could talk about sustainability in the sense that I think it means environmental, social and political improvement for this, the sake of, you know, preserving, you know, the, the classic school example, preserving it for the next generation. Right. right. That could be the, the example I use. And if we're talking in those senses, then fashion has a massive work role to play in terms of sustainability, mm-hmm. um, environmental sustainability, social sustainability, political sustainability, fashion I think fashion has a great way to be a medium, especially the arts in general. Mm. Really. But fashion has a great way to have a way of creating somewhat of political sustainability mm. in com- countries through economic sustainability. Mm. So if you create an industry, you know, like uh, Pakistan, India, the Indian subcontinent is so well known for textiles. Yeah. However, companies have, you know, inadvertently, inadvertently in quotes, come in and abuse those right. textiles and, right and that's been proven you know, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, um yeah. rana plaza is a great example yeah, of that absolutely in 2013 um so if you can get an industry textiles industry and you can make it economically viable economically sustainable mm. therefore doing it in an environmental social way you can then in a way create political sustainability because you have an economy that can help run the country Got if it. that makes sense yeah. or a region mm. um and i'm not saying that's like a very idealistic and a very like you know mm. pragmatic way of thinking but you know essentially in states where that's possible that is that is somewhat possible so you can they didn't really answer what your question was but mm. in, in 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 a sense that like blockchain blockchain can be used to help countries or states in countries or towns in countries develop somewhat of a all-round sustainability so that the buzzword kind of actually has some sort of some substance. Meaning. Right. You know? Yeah. Because I might talk about, um, uh, you know, social sustainability. Rahid might talk about legal sustainability. Right. And um, fashion might talk about in, in, environmental sustainability. Yeah. Yeah. We're all talking about the same things. Yeah. 
it's just not in context. Right. If that makes sense. <laughs> Just a quick reminder, you're listening to the Fashion Vanguard's EO London podcast. Please subscribe on whatever platform you're listening on, give us a review, and carry on the protest. Enjoy the rest of the podcast. Well, amongst glitches, really, I, I read about something called the 51% attack, which I don't completely understand if someone can explain that. So um, a 51% attack on um, blockchain is uh, pretty, um, it's, it's, it's probably the best known way to hack into a, uh, into a blockchain. Mm -hmm. It's happened before with, uh, well, it's been threatened to happen with Bitcoin before. Similar sort of thing happened with Ethereum. What is it? Um, so... When I talked about uh, in a previous episode, the idea that you can have decentralized governance and that the rules, the constitution, mm -hmm. if you like, um, is governed by a majority. Mm -hmm. If a majority of the nodes, that is to say the computers, um, decide that the constitution is to be changed to something malicious, like, say, all transactions are now to go into my bank account in the Cayman Islands. Yes, um, nice. Then uh, it's pretty, 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 pretty useful. <laughs> um, um, then, then they can do that if they controlled, you know, a majority, fifty-one percent mm -hmm. of the okay. the, not, mm -hmm. uh, the the yeah the notes. Um, that's that's it really. But the um, it's 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 not a you know it's not it's not a huge huge issue these days. Um, but that is, you know, that's a very complacent thing to say, to be fair. But um, it is in, in, in big, big cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or where you have centralized governments like what banks are trying to do or like I would suspect what uh, fashion supply chain blockchain companies are trying to do. Um, they've probably, you know, mitigated this issue somewhat by either centralization or just making it so damn hard mm. to control over half the network. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And if are there other glitches that you think are perhaps bigger than the 51% attack, something more likely, something that's really a flaw with blockchain? Well, I mean, the, the, obviously different different blockchains are different constitutions, if you like. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin has plenty of flaws, which is why anyone who's worth their salt, will, well, I'm being very biased, but anyone <laughs> worth their salt will tell you, yeah, these are the flaws. Um, and the people who say there aren't flaws generally have a vested interest. Um, the, the flaws can be things like time it takes to secure a block of transactions mm -hmm. um in the for 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 Bitco bitcoin as it is um i think the theoretical maximum number of transactions you can have per second off the top of my head is 7 whereas if you can imagine visa is doing about 2000 a second mm -hmm. clearly it can't compete uh that's a big issue um there are issues surrounding the questions of centralization as i mentioned earlier there are issues surrounding the question of immutability immutability is a fancy word that computer science people like to use all it means um is that it's uh something that can't be changed um mm -hmm. i uh, you, when you think about cds um you you have say uh, an ordinary cd it's cd read only or you have cd rewrite or dvd read only or dvd rewrite um, with DVD rewrite, you can go back and you can change the content of that DVD. DVD read only, you can you, you can't change it. Mm. Um, if you have a, a rewritable blockchain, so to speak, then um, you can go back and you can change what goes on. And that uh -oh. can be through a 51% attack. Yeah. That can be through having a silly constitution. Uh, that can be through maybe a centralized um, blockchain and someone hacking into that central point um, and doing something malicious. Uh, Whereas if you, yeah, so that's, that's, that's a big issue. Um, so yeah, there are some, some glitches, mm -hmm. some issues. I wouldn't necessarily call them glitches because they are sort of baked in. Mm -hmm. But they're things you have to manage. At the end of the day, it's, you know, it's real life. There, there are going to be problems with any system. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you just have to ask yourself, what are your priorities? They're probably security. They're probably reliability. And I suspect in the fashion supply chain context, uh, transparency. And you've got to do your best just to to, to mitigate any issues. That well, like, I I think also, and it's a good point. Blockchains, it, it it's a complex 
you know, process. The, the, the point to take away with this is that, you know, where it is a new technology, we, that there's always going to be room for anything to, to possibly happen, um, which will negate, obviously, its main benefits. So I think really researching and having a greater understanding of the technology and how it can be misused in any ways is just really important. I think it it's it's difficult for us to, you know, sort of list, I guess, all the all the potential scenarios of, of things not going well. Um, but then also I think, you know, it's good to to have this sort of process in place because that's essentially what blockchains is meant to do. It's meant to prevent, you know, counterfeit hacking, all the things that we have now become quite accustomed to, you know, particularly with anything that's sort of, you know, internet enabled or, you know, cloud enabled or whatever that involves us, you know, using some sort of, you know, innovation or technology or whatever. I I, I hope I'm making my point clear, but, um, it, you know, if it's meant to remedy that, but then also it's susceptible to the same threats you know, it, it's sort of like, okay, well, we just need to think a little bit more. That's not to say we park the idea, but it's, you know, that it's it's still an idea in pilot. I, I fear I may have um, induced a bit too much pessimism. <laughs> um, no, 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 we like because... that. We, we know we do like that. <laughs> well, it, 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 here's the thing, here's the thing. Yeah, anyone who's worked in tech will tell you that um, hacks do happen and it's, it's it just happens. Every single thing you're using is susceptible to hacking. Mm. One of the reasons I'm a little skeptical about uh, blockchain being used for voting is because if there is a hack, and my God, people will try to hack it, yeah. then the mm. consequences can be very, very, very grave. They can mm. affect our government. They can affect democracy as a whole. Um, but hacks happen. They just do. Mm. Um, you can't get around it. I, I've got a little startup I'm starting at the moment. The launch site, nothing going on with the launch site. It's just a very, very simple site. <laughs> Within an hour of it being launched, two people tried to hack us. Oh and this is nothing. This is nothing. <laughs> you know, you can just imagine. It, it, it just, these things happen. You've got to do your best to mitigate any issues. You've got to do your best to encrypt uh, data so that it's really hard for people to get, you know, your customers' passwords yeah, or whatever. Yeah, it, yeah. To use a really practical example. These things happen. Blockchain is maybe a, an improvement. But I, I'll, I'll say, I've said it before and I'll say it again. It is not a panacea. There are, you know, you should have reservations. Mm. Um but it doesn't mean you should you should give up on it or stick a pin in it. I think is roughly what you yeah. were saying. So I think we agree. Yeah. And you, you know, to follow up, follow on from what you've just said, actually, when we're looking at AI, which is probably a bigger innovation, you know, sure. you're not mm-hmm. even dealing with that. I'm sure those hackers weren't mm-hmm. actual people; they were bots. No, no, were, those those are all people. The, the, <laughs> <laughs> they were. <laughs> we, we, we kind of figured out who they were as well. They're very Ash cheeky. Reedy. It very was cheeky. you, wasn't it? <laughs> Go on. <laughs> really, it was, it was uh, ge- geologists, student geologists is what we figured it was probably going to be, well, which is th- really weird. It well, can be anyone. You know, we're in a culture of hackers. Didn't, yeah. Did you not hear of some guy who hacked into Apple because he wanted yeah. to get a job there? I mean, it's that. Fair oh, I heard of oh, that. Gosh, yeah. <laughs> That's a good way of doing it. That's yeah. a good, and then there's the, the guy who um, was almost deported to America, but managed to stay in the UK yes. in part because I think he was autistic. Yeah, and so yeah, he had yeah, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because he wanted to find out evidence of aliens within the Pentagon database. <laughs> Oh, is right? that so, why he did no it? Way. I think, well, but that's what's claimed, at least, by oh, his defense yeah. counsel. Uh, <laughs> and I, I suspect that's true. Right? I mean, I, I, it's, it's an interesting enough topic. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it, it happens. It happens. Hacks happen. Mm. You know, it's just like, like are you, are you going to tell me, OK, tomorrow, you know, Sadiq Khan's going to do something and suddenly all the stabbings in London are going to stop. Yeah. All of them, ah, it's yeah. still going to happen. You can reduce it. You can mitigate it. Mm. But bad things happen. If they didn't happen, then I wouldn't. There would be no point in me studying law. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so then, but then that's not really a reason to to maybe negate. I guess the the positives yeah. of yeah. blockchain. Yeah. Just, you just you just need to you take things, need to take things right. Right. Bit, bit absolutely. Of perspective. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think that sort of answers our next question about how those glitches can be tackled because. Mm. Really, I mean, there are glitches, but they're not big enough that we completely mm. sort of give up on blockchain. There, obviously, uh, it, there is. It's important that C-suite lemmings are told exactly <laughs> like what the issues are. That they that they're told, you know, these are the risks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think awareness is a big thing, mm-hmm. uh, and also just practicing good um, good hygiene. Mm-hmm. That is to say, when you, I don't mean like physical hygiene, yeah, 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 yeah. That is, I mean, do that as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm absolutely in favor of that. I, I encourage you. Uh, but uh, in terms of making sure whatever data you're using is encrypted, 
um, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, lobbying the government to make sure that they don't make it illegal to encrypt things. Um, so doing things along those lines uh, is, is, is a good idea. It's just it's, it's sort of um, computer security common sense. Just mm. make sure you follow along with that and, and you'll be as OK as anyone can be. Just get a witch guide and you'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> witch, so, I'll do it. That'll do it. So do, you mentioned government control. Do you think we actually would need you know, intervention from some regulatory body to yeah. to in, ensure or to tackle the issues that do oh, yeah. arise. Oh, yeah. I mean, if say, say there's a fraudulent situation. Well, mm -hmm. in this country, we have the serious fraud office. The joke about the serious fraud office is they never prosecute anyone. But maybe, you know, <laughs> maybe there'll be uh, uh, a, a great opening <laughs> now for true. them to prosecute more people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there are... You know, give, give them some work to do. That'll be a good idea. Um, so, there, there, yeah, and then there'll be, you know, the, the FCA, Financial Conduct Authority, mm. in, in a financial situation. Mm -hmm. There's, um, I, I'm not quite sure, I'm sure Daniel can help me here, with the Modern Slavery Act coming through, there are probably bodies built. There, there's the modern, there's a commissioner, isn't there? There's the, the wow. anti-slavery commissioner and so on. Mm. I don't know how much power he has, uh, but maybe expand his powers. I don't know. There are... Um, there's lots of, yeah, you, you, you got it. I mean, that's the point of having regulations around these things. Mm. Things do go wrong, so the government steps in. Hopefully the government isn't corrupt. Mm. And in this country, generally speaking, things are, are not too corrupt when it comes to this sort of thing. Blockchain has been tested and used in the fashion industry to a very small extent, but its potential is huge. However, there are several shortcomings. We discussed whether or not these shortcomings would be completely detrimental to the use of blockchain in the fashion industry.